My name is Dr. David Lutton from Washington, D.C. Today we're going to be discussing the osteo agar. It is a sterile tool that can be utilized to obtain autologous graft. It's a fully sterile system. In the shoulder arthroplasty scenario, I utilize this for my vault lock as well as the cage screw for an eclipse. This does not require a pilot hole to be created. It can be used quickly on the back table utilizing a quick connect adapter. It has a morselizing cutting tip. It is available in three different sizes, 6, 8, and 10 millimeters. I typically find that the 8 millimeter works perfectly for the vault lock system. A plunger can be provided for simplified graft removal. The osteoagar here can be assembled like so. Your scrub tech on the back table can go ahead and assemble this. And typically, I find that the 8 millimeter osteoagar works the best when going ahead and prepping and bone grafting our vault lock. Next step is to go ahead and harvest bone graft. I can disassemble and bring our bone graft into a little specimen cup as such. Next, we're going to load our graft into our compression tool. So this fits just like that. We can take our vault lock, squeeze down gently, circumferentially, just like this. We can see the bone graft that is here. And then I want to do this on the other side as well. We're going to complete our bone grafting by squeezing down on our other side, just like this. And then we have 360 degrees of bone graft. Our next step is to bone graft our cage screw for our eclipse. We take our morselized graft from our osteo agar, and we can pack this into our cage screw. And if need be, we can go ahead and take a bone tamp and squeeze it down. We're going to cement the top and the bottom, and then we're ready to go ahead and implant. See here, here. And we're ready to proceed with our eclipse. Again, our cage screw already has our bone graft. We're going to center our cage screw in. We're going to apply our tower here. Again, I want to see this window, and I want to apply force all the way around so it stays flat. Insert our driver, and good axial pressure, and slide this down. Excellent. Take all of this off, and then we'll trial our humeral heads. So once we've applied our trial head, we're going to remove all of our retractors as such. We're going to internally rotate. And my goal is to have approximately 50% posterior subluxation of our humeral head on our glenoid. We don't want it snapping over the back and it just recentering right into the middle.